right, I've literally just had to pull over there um, because there is some cows on top of a hill with beautiful blue fluffy cloud, blue white fluffy clouds on a blue backdrop of the sky. It's absolutely beautiful. I need to get out of my uh, 6x17 and uh, see if I can get something with this. So I'm going to shoot out now and see if I can get this and see whether they play ball and stay on top of this little mound thing. Uh, they look like they are because they're all sat down uh, and just chilling out. So I'm going to get out of there and see if I can uh, get some good shots. Welcome folks to a, uh, a very busy roadside uh, just on the uh, Mendips and I'm just driving back home actually it's Friday uh, just driving back home and I've come across these uh, cows that are on top of this hill just in front of me in fact I'll swing you around up there look and um, I just love the way that the the grass is newly cut and uh, just the way that the, um, well it's one mountain or another at the moment so that doesn't look very good, but just the way that the, uh, the clouds are and all that sort of thing, I just thought, do you know what, I'm going to stop, I'm going to have a uh, gonna have a shot, just see if this comes out. So I've loaded the only thing I had which is Ektar 100 and I'm just about to meet the scene now, I'm just tempted to put a polarizer on, the sun is sort of just above me. And I've just got polarizing glasses on, so I'm looking through them and they look quite nice. It really brings the uh, uh, the clouds in the sky out real nice. So I might just put a polarizer on, um, if I've got it with me, that is. I might have left it in the car, actually, so uh, that might be a bad idea. In fact, I'll have to have a look in the bag to see if I've got it. But uh, yeah, if I have got it, I'll put a polarizer on um, and catch these cows before they disappear. They don't look like they're going anywhere soon. Most of them are sat down, to be fair. And then there's a bit of... Uh, bit of shagging action going on by the looks of things so I'll try not to get that in the shot either and uh, a minute ago they were all lined up with their asses to me so uh, that wouldn't look very good either so I'm just sort of waiting for a good moment here but I just love the way that they're just on top of this peak of a hill and I just thought a pano shot this is almost like a minimalist shot the only issue is I have got some sort of trees off um, to the uh, the right hand side of the frame um, which are going to unbalance the image a bit but I couldn't really get any further that way because uh, we've got the mounds of sort of spoil over there that would get in the way of my shot so I'm going to have to take this and see what I do with that I might crop in a bit further later I've got 250mm lens on I might crop in a bit further later just to get like literally the grass the cows the sky and that's it and that's what I'm really looking for um, so yeah I need to get uh, get moving on this so I'm just gonna get on and meet of this scene that is a bit of an odd one because literally everything is pretty much EV15 which uh, makes my life massively easy so right let's get on and take my first shot this is a bit precarious because I don't know I'm pretty sure that I've uh, yeah just checking that the lens uh, was closed because I've had a bit of a nightmare with photography which I'll talk about some other time this week um, and I'll go into it on a, probably in the video I did this morning which was hopefully hopefully the end of my bad luck that I've had over the last few days but let's get on and take this so I'm going to go f22 60th of a second or I might even go down a bit more to f16 and 125th per second to try because obviously they are moving up there and I'd like to get them as still as possible so let's go f16 and I might just try one at f11 excuse me look right let's get this shot and hopefully this comes out first shot first one there we go that's that done 
I've also been having an issue with my 6x17 back where it's not been rolling on properly to the first frame. This winding sort of knob, want of a better word, it feels quite stiff now. And it's the last roll, which was the gold that I shot this morning at the lavender field, I had to um, make a uh, makeshift uh, dart bag out of what um, what I had with me to uh, sort of get the film out of the holder because it wouldn't advance anymore. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, I haven't exposed that to the light, but the chances are that I might have done, which would be bloody annoying if I have. But uh, it just, sort of, like I say, finishing off a bad week of photography, which I'll talk about in the lavender video. Um, which I'll probably put out before this one, to be honest. Uh, but I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that this makes uh, makes up for the rubbish I had this morning. Right, let's get shot two taken. Gonna go with F11, uh, 250th of a second now, um, and just see where that brings us out. So, like I said, I've got nothing in the foreground to um, worry about. The main thing here is uh, capturing the scene as like a still image. Right, here we go, next shot. Nobody's humping anybody, so we're all good. Shield back. Beautiful. Right, I'm gonna roll on to frame five. And I'm just gonna see if I've got the polarizer in my bag. If I have, I'll meter through it, and then I'll change my settings to uh, two. So I'm just gonna have a look now. I'll see you guys in a second. Oh, right, I am knackered. Note to self, when I get home, order another one of these. 67 mil to 77 mil adapter, because I've just had to run back down to the car to get this to be able to put the polarizer on. Um, my digital camera, oh, oh, yeah. Lumix is, uh, all the, the lenses I've got for that are all same size filter thread they basically upside everything to 77 mil so that's what i've done with that which means i've got step up rings i've only got one 67 mil and i always forget it which is a bloody pain in the ass so a definite note to self is next time we'll buy another filter adapter so i don't have to run up and down the hill Beautiful. That is the right settings. Fully polarized. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my app um, to just check the rest of possible, well not rest of possible, but just check what the uh, polarizer is going to do to the scene. So I'll leave it the same. Take two shots again. F11 first this time and then um, F16, so if I go to 1 2 50th, add a filter, you can tell I don't really use filters that much, so I'm just going to go down a stop, F11, change it down to 1 2 50th, or 1 2 50th of a second, it's got a beat then, just uh, check the shutter, all done. Right, let's get on and take a shot. Here we go. First time using the polarizer, by the way, with Ektar 100. I don't use it very often. I should use it more, but this scene just lends into it. First shot taken. So, the reason why I wanted to use the polarizer lens today, or the polarizer filter on this scene, is because you've got the blue sky and these big old fluffy white clouds and they just make, the polarizer is just going to make them pop and make that sky really blue, deep blue and just saturate the, uh, the colours that are here. Um, so I think this shot is going to look real nice and I'm really looking forward to seeing the polarised images. So what I'm going to do now is change that down to 160 for a second and move my F stop to F16 and I'm going to take the next frame on. First of all, I've got to roll on, of course. I'll just tap the uh, shutter. Yeah, all working. Right. 
I've got to wait for some light now because the light's just gone. Right, I think we've got our light. It's actually just like a dappled light at the moment. Uh, oops, on the scene, wall's moving. Hopefully that's not uh, affected the focus now. But I'm just going to say, while I'm waiting for this light to hit, which I think it's just about to, that sometimes, to me, these are the best types of photography. It's just that sort of... That's it, beautiful. Done. Last one in the bag. It's that sort of impromptu driving along and you've just, you know, you've not really got to be anywhere or do anything. And uh, it's just that opportunity just to sort of go, right, that looks great. I'm going to stop and take a photo, which is what I've done today. And it just, that sort of photography sometimes is some of the best. Because, of course, you don't know that you're going to get it. You're not set out to, uh, to get that type of shot. But it just sort of happens and like I say to me that's the best type of photography or sometimes it's the best type of photography it reminds me a bit that when we had some snow down here just after Christmas that's all I did I just come out I mean all right I was I was coming out to do photography but it was literally stop on the side of the road and just jump out and get that shot and jump back in the car and just carry on my normal day and I got some great shots that day, or at least I, I thought so. But I think I'm going to get off the side of this road now because it is busy. And uh, this is the issue I'm having with my 6x17 back. The film is stuck on 8 in there and it isn't advancing. So now the only way to safely get this out of here is to actually put it in a dark bag now and get the film out. So I'm going to have to go home and get the film out of that and just sort of try and find out what exactly has gone wrong with this is happening with it it's the second roll now unfortunately so anyway right i'm going to get packed up i'm going to get these images developed so i hope you enjoyed that bit of outdoor video um not just done now you've just seen um it was certainly what i needed to lift my spirits because i was having a particularly bad week uh in the photography sense anyway and i just wanted to allude quickly on what i mentioned in that video i was going to do another video on it but i thought no i'll just mention it at the end of this one um because i don't want to dwell on it i just want to move on but it's more for people who um perhaps are well you might have been doing it a long time uh, you might have only just started and this only other um but it's about landowners and obviously this is more so for the uk than it is anywhere else because i don't know what the laws are anywhere else but i just wanted to quickly talk about landowners and um you know the couple of issues that i've had um this week or that week that i've done that video so the first one was about cows actually um and it was that i was going to do a, a lumix wednesday video and i was going to talk about my um my sort of lens i bought some time ago which is the sigma 100 400 and just my views on it and i was going to go up that little hill uh where i did the from 400 video from uh with my 6x17 back of glastonbury tour in the background as there's the panel so i was going to do that uh, same image because i'm still looking to get a shot up there and i thought why not take that do that anyway so so i pulled up and i parked up in a you know in a um on a roadside so i wasn't blocking anyone's uh anyone's sort of driveway it was on private land it was on i was on highway land so it was all fine and i got my stuff on i got out and all the rest of it got my bag on set my camera up and then i went to walk through this little gap in the hedge um and you can't see what's the other side of the hedge with a little gap and a stile on the other side it's a proper walkway and the the actual walkway according to the map goes up the hill uh to the top of the hill and then down the other side and then through and once you get to the bottom there's another gate and you carry on so that's the actual route of the footpath and that is um public footpath and it's a right to roam footpath all this sort of thing so i went to the style walked over and immediately after the style there's an electric fence and it's blocked the entire field off so there's no way to walk through so you go to the style and you just met by electric fence you can't walk around it because the the farmers did it right up to the uh to the hedgerow and it went around as far as you could see so you couldn't get through uh, this walkway so the farmer had just taken it on himself to completely and utterly block the footpath which happens more often um or more often than i'd like to you'd like to admit uh, maybe in the more popular walk areas it's less so uh, because more people are out there more people are reporting it to the council and all this that, and the other um, but in this instance this footway is probably rarely used and the farmer just thought he could block it off and not have to worry about it now 
I see why he blocked it off, or it didn't, I didn't see why he blocked it off, but I see why the electric fence was there. Because when I made my way over, um, I immediately alerted the cows that were in the field, and they were cows with some young calves with them. And as soon as they saw me, they decided to come over to me to have a look. Now, when they got within about 10 meters of me, two of them charged and went for me. And I was like taken back by this. So I thought, right, I'm going to retreat back over the uh, back over the thing. And as I sort of turned my back, uh, one of them went for me again. And thankfully, the electric fence was there because that was the only thing that was stopping the cow from really smashing me into the uh, into the hedgerow. Because that's what would have probably have happened if I if I um, if that electric fence wasn't there. And I just sort of thought. Okay, fine. The farmer has, has done that to stop the thing, but he's not offered any other way of getting round the walk. There's no way it stops at that point. You can't get round unless you know you do a massive diversion. But he's not signed it. He's not signed that there's cows in the field. He's not done anything like that. He's just blocked foot way off and gone. That's it. Which um, obviously sport my day massively, and I just got back in my car and went. So that was the first issue that happened on the Monday or the Tuesday, I can't remember what it was now. And then on the Friday morning, which is the day that I took the, uh, the cow images, which you've just seen, um, I went back to my lavender field. And what it is with the lavender field is I parked around a corner um, on public highway again, um, not in a stupid place, there's loads of other cars parked there, it's not WLL line or anything like that, it's just, you know, parked there, not blocking anybody's uh, access or anything like that. And then you walk around the corner and again, there is a footway. Now this footway is signposted footway and it's uh, it goes down a track, which is probably about four meters wide. Uh, and it's also the farmer's access into that field uh, via tractor and all that. So unless the farmer has sort of put a, a physical fence along or some sort of wire rope or a sign saying footpath to the left or keep to the right, uh, the footpath really is deemed to be anywhere within that four meters from, from the hedgerow to the wall. So that's what happens. So that went on for about 20 meters and then it opened out into the field. Now what he'd done is the wall carried on on this side and, the, and it just got a bit wider to his field edge. So again, in that view, there's no sign, there's no barrier, there's no road or anything like that saying keep to the left or keep to the right footpath to the right there's no indication of where it is other than it just goes straight across that field into the next one and you carry on so I set myself up on the edge of his field not in his field on the edge of his field I'm always very respectful of landowners uh, when I go out and shoot I wouldn't ever dream of going into the middle of his uh, of his field and shooting from there because I know that at that point I'm trespassing I should be there I shouldn't be trampling anyone's crop down or anything like that so I would never ever do something like that so I'm stood on the on his field edge uh, on the grass, um, not got any of my stuff anywhere near it. I'm not disturbing it. I'm not pointing my camera at his house. I'm keeping my voice down because I know there's people around, although his house is, is a good 500 meters away from where I am, still keeping my voice down. And um, anyway, so I was just, I'd set up my camera. I managed to get these two shots, which I'm just about to put on screen now. And they were very rushed because um, I wanted to take two before sunrise and then two just sort of as the sun had just popped up again. And Anyway, I managed to get the first two and then this voice pops out from behind the wall, basically just having a go at me. He completely and utterly went for me, this guy. I don't know whether he got up on the wrong side of the bed. Maybe he's had an argument with his, with his other half. You know, maybe his dog had bit him on the way out the door. His tea was too cold or whatever it was. I don't know what it was, but he had the absolute just he rage for the fact that I was actually there. And the fact that I was stood on a footway or it might have been a meter off the foot i don't know because he hadn't you know they haven't said where this footway is um i wasn't in his field i wasn't pointing anything at his house i wasn't doing anything what i would see as wrong um but this guy just took absolute homage the fact that i was there he w really wasn't having it at all and at that point it was like right i've got two i've got two decisions to make now I either just go, okay, fine, pack up, and just go, right, I'll, I'll just leave them, whatever. Um, or I could stand up and have a massive row with him. And the two things went through my mind quickly. But what I then decided to do was, you know what? He'd already ruined my sunrise because the sun was already up by then. The guy, um, had, while I was just packing my stuff, I all decided I was going to go. I decided he was going to go and get his forklift to come and park immediately in the field to block any shot that I could possibly have. So he was that, he was that arsy with me. And um, yeah, he just, he just decided, and that was it. And, it, and it, I just thought, well, 
okay, maybe if there was hundreds of photographers keep going up there and doing the same thing, maybe he was getting the arse with photographers being up there. But I'd been up there quite a few times. He hadn't seen me any other day than, than the first day I was there when he didn't say anything to me on that day. And I hadn't seen a single other photographer. I'd never been in his field. Um, I don't park anywhere near his house. Um, so I'm not quite sure why, why he took that, that view. Um, and obviously I'm photographing a crop that, you know, he can't really stop me from photographing, I suppose, but in his mind he could. Um, so, and I just thought it was a bit of a funny thing to do because in my little world, perhaps, if I saw a photographer on my land, like, oh, not my land, but on a public footpath photographing my land, which is my business, and I've got a, I've got a coffee shop and I've got a shop where you can go and buy lavender and buy lavender products that perhaps a photographer being there, taking a shot respectfully, um, not if, you know, perhaps if I had got there and a photographer, and a photographer was in the middle of my field, then I'd have something to say to him because obviously he probably charges for people to walk up and down that crop during the day. Uh, hence the reason why I didn't go into his field as well, because I probably knew I knew that he would probably charge for, for, for people to do that and take their shot for Instagram and all that sort of thing. But for me, I'd have thought that a photographer turning out, being on a public footpath as far as they could see, not trampling his crop, not being loud, not being disrespectful, all the rest of it, taking a shot and then put it on 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 uh, Instagram or Facebook and all the rest of it would sort of help him. I'm not saying that I would help him. I don't have masses of, of subscribers, but he would get a photographer that would turn out there would have loads of subscribers, you know, because all he, he there you know, could have been a massive photographer in the area and had loads of following. And, you know, I would be quite happy to stand there and go, yeah, come here, come to this place. Uh, you know, bring your family along. So they've got a, they've got a shop and they've got this and the other and it looks really nice. It's a real nice view and all, you know, because I'm quite keen to promote places that I go to, uh, especially if they're nice. Um, so yeah, I'd have thought that actually me being there is probably doing more good than bad. <laughs> Not wanting to be big headed about it, but you know, photographers turning up and getting a good shot and sharing their location and where they are and all the rest of it, you know, would, would prompt other people to go and, and probably visit the place and spend money and uh, this and anyway. Anyway, that so that's that one I packed away and, and I just managed to get them a couple of shots. Um I'd miss sunrise completely. Just put me on a complete and out of downer mood, to be honest with you. I just had enough at that point and I just thought, ah, do you know what? I just, you know, I could have quite easily have not taken any photos in for a good couple of weeks because I just had enough. And I went to, I went to work and I still had my camera bag in a car. And of course, then when I came, when I was driving home, just out of nowhere, that shot appeared, caught in the corner of my eye, turned around, went back to it and got out and got that shot or them four shots. And I was really, really pleased. It real massive lift that I needed to, uh, you know, to sort of go against that uh, that sort of horrible morning and the other morning that I'd had with the cows. So um, yeah, so just you know, I suppose the takeaway from that really to to anybody is I've been photographing for well over twenty years. Um, been out doing landscape photography more than anything. Um, uh, yes, there has been time when I've I've trespassed and I shouldn't have done, and I've been caught and got a bollocking for it and pop hands up and say, yeah, I'm sorry. But nowadays I'm older and wiser and I'm a lot more respectful for people's land. Uh, that's why one of the reasons why when I do uh, street photography, I'm not particularly good at it because, you know, some photographers will almost go and put the camera in someone's face, take a shot and then carry on walking type thing and get like a moment, but real up close. And for me, I sometimes I just struggle with that. Uh, sometimes I, I'm, I'm one of them people that worries about people's personal space and that sort of thing. So I've always classed myself as being respectful. Um, so yeah, it's frustrating then when that sort of thing happens. But anyway, um, as long as you're respectful um, and you're, you know, sticking to a footpath or perceived footpath um, and you're not taking a picture, you know, in somebody's, through somebody's front window and all that sort of stuff, um, you know, your privacy, you're not flying a drone over the house and that sort of thing, then I don't see why anybody should take offence to what you're doing. Um, but it's just to sort of say really that in all the years I've been doing, I'd say 20 plus years now, that I've been um, I've been sort of had a row or potential row with a landowner twice. In all of that time, so twice. One of it was, the, like I say, the one we just talked about, and the other one was probably about 15 years ago now uh, up, in, in, up in Yorkshire. So 
you know, when you look at the amount of times I've been out over them years, which is hundreds and hundreds and thousands of times I've been out uh, and I've been caught, you know, I've not been caught, but, you know, I've had, I've had somebody take offence to me being there twice. Um, so, you know, the chances are it's going to happen to, to you guys out there when you do it. But all I would say is, you know, if it does happen, you've just got to evaluate the scene that you're, you know, what the scenario that's unfolding in front of you and just take the uh, the path of least resistance because there is no point having a massive round at quarter past five in the morning with a farmer because he's just going to be, you know, he's, he's just going to be an arsehole. But it's, it's, you're not going to get any enjoyment out of yourself. You might as well just pack up and just carry on walking and find somewhere else to photograph perhaps, um, you know, because... You know, yeah, an argument after quarter past five in the morning, no use to anyone, in my, in my view. But just be respectful and, um, you know, you should be fine. You know, like I say, it's happened to me twice in, in all of that time. Um, yeah, it's just one of them things, really. But I was so, so happy to get them shots of them cows stood by the roadside. So happy because that was the lift I definitely needed. So anyway, thanks for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, didn't really want to finish on a downer because yes, I'm very, very happy with my shots. So that's a, that is a definite amazing thing. Um, but I just wanted to mention it because I thought it was worth mentioning, and I just thought it was a part of landscape photography. It's a part of photography in general, apart from if you do weddings and that sort of thing, um, where you're paid to be there. If you're doing street photography, uh, drone photography, that sort of thing, then you're more likely to be to come across them scenarios. Less so in landscape photography, probably more so in in, uh, in street photography. But there's always up that chance that you're going to come up against that. So just be wary of it and just handle it calmly uh, and just you know carry on with your day. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, so I've, I've enjoyed making it first part anyway. Um, and yeah, like to it would be uh, really appreciated. Subscription to the channel always massively appreciate it. helps me out hugely and uh, please leave a comment below uh, always read them i always go back to people and i always really appreciate when people take the time to uh, leave a comment and i do apologize if it does take me a few days to get back to people but i always do so anyway i'll see you guys in the next one have a good one